Okay, today what we're going to look at is how to handle multiple loads acting on a single truss. So here you'll see we have a 200 pound load and a 100 pound load. They're both acting on this truss, which is suspended from a pin here and a roller over here. Uh, we're not going to go through and work out all the forces in each member, uh, but what I do want to look at is the forces at the supports or the reaction forces at the supports. So what we're going to try to go through and do is work out how large these reaction forces are, both at the roller and at the pin. Okay, now it's a pretty reasonable guess that they're upward because both of our loads are downward, but we'll go through and calculate this. Uh, and the fact is, even though we're dealing with multiple loads here, we deal with this exactly as we would any other truss. And that is we're going to look at the sum of all torques around each support. So let's start with the pin. The sum of all torques around the pin still needs to equal zero, as it always does. If there's a net torque around this point, this entire truss is going to rotate. And we have a drawbridge, which we don't necessarily want all the time. Um, so we're going to look at each external force. Over here on the left, we have the force by the roller. We've got this 200 pound load, this 100 pound load, and then of course there's the force by the pin. So we'll just start over here and work our way across. Um, this force by the roller is going to produce some torque. Now the force by the roller, we don't know this magnitude. This is what we're trying to solve for. So we're just going to leave this as a variable, the force by the roller. Um, it's acting at an effective moment arm of 20 feet. So we're going to have 20 feet times our force by the roller. And these are at a right angle. Uh, the, the, by definition, the force is always at a right angle to the moment arm. And in this case, the moment arm is, in fact, just this radius from here to here. Now, acting in the opposite direction, we're going to have this 200-pound load. The 200-pound load is acting at an effective moment arm of 15 feet. That is, if I was to extend this dimension from the force backwards to this point right here, it's 15 feet from the pin to a point along this radius vector, which is perpendicular to the force. So we're going to have 15 times 200. Now you'll notice I said this is negative, and that's because this is producing a torque which is going to be in the opposite direction around the pin than the, the force by the roller. Okay. Ultimately, what we're doing in this problem is we're saying the clockwise torques are positive. So that makes this negative. Now, if you're still confused on where this 15 came from, go back and take a look at the effective moment arm video up here. That'll help you understand how I was able to work this out without having to figure out the radius from here to this point and the awful angle between these two. Saves me a bunch of time. In a similar fashion to the 200 pound load, this 100 pound load, it's acting at an effective moment arm of five feet. So we're gonna have at five feet, 100 pounds. Lastly, we have this force by the pin and it is producing no torque because it's acting at a radius of zero away from the pin. So of zero times FP. Well, that term goes away clearly. If we go through and we solve for the force by the roller, we'll find the force by the roller is equal to 175 pounds. To solve for the force by the pin, we're gonna do a similar process to this, except we're gonna look at everything around the roller. So the sum of all torques around the roller needs to equal to zero. Otherwise, we've got a drawbridge or a failing bridge, and we don't want that. Now this time, our force by the roller, we know it's 175 pounds, but it, that force is acting at a radius of zero relative to the roller. The force is at the roller. So I'm gonna say at a radius of zero, we have 175 pounds. That clearly reduces down to zero. Uh, this time, our 200 pound load is acting at an effective moment arm of five feet. And it's acting clockwise, so we're going to make it positive this time. 5 times 200, plus we have our 100-pound load acting at an effective radius of 15. And lastly, we have our force by the pin, which is acting at an effective moment arm of 20. And we solve for the force by the pin, and we find that there's 125 pounds of force vertically in this pin. I say this has to be upward because... This has to be producing a torque around the roller, which is counterclockwise. Okay, 
Uh, truly, if we had paid attention to the signs, this we could have guessed was in the negative direction. Uh, and ultimately, that would yield the positive value for FP. Remember, when we're dealing with these torque equations, whether we come up with a positive or a negative value isn't really all that revealing to us, um, unless we're extremely strict about signs throughout the entire process. What I find is easiest to do, honestly, is just think about it a little bit, okay? We know in this case, the roller, if we treat that as a pivot point, both of these loads are trying to turn this entire truss clockwise. That means this force here has to be acting on the truss counterclockwise. Um, and once we know those values, we'll write them in. So we have 175 pounds upward here, and 125 pounds upward here. Now from this point on, if we wanted to go through and solve for the forces in each joint, we could go through and label each member. And we would solve this truss just like always. Uh, in this case, you could start at either of the loads or the supports. Uh, what's gonna be easiest is to start at one of these two supports. Uh, and work your way through this. It's just like solving a truss with a single load. So the only thing we have to really do different when dealing with multiple loads is first sort out the uh, the forces by the supports using both torques from both loads. Okay, this time around what I want to do is take the same exact truss and I want to put a load on this truss. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different than the last time. We're going to put a load at an angle. So we're going to put a load on this joint right here. And this load is going to be 223 pounds. I know that seems like a strange number. You'll see in a second why I chose this. And this load is at an angle of 63 Point four degrees. Okay, now why such a ridiculous load in a ridiculous direction? Well, that's simple. When we have a load at an angle like this, what we do is we break the load up into its components. And so this load right here has a vertical component. That vertical component extending downward has a magnitude of 200 pounds. Uh, that would be 223 sine 63.4. It has a horizontal component that is 100 pounds. That would be 223 cosine 63.4. So the point here is we're actually dealing with multiple loads. Yes, this load is at an angle, uh, but we can break this up to be two loads that are simply happening and to start at the same joint. We're gonna deal with this just like we would any other problem where there were multiple loads. Uh, and we're gonna work out the sum of all torques around the roller and the pin. Uh, and from there on, this truss can be solved just like any other. So there's gonna be some force by the pin, some force by the roller. Sorry, other way around. Force by the roller, force by the pin. And I'll draw these in once we've figured out just how large they are and in what direction they're acting. So let's start by looking at the sum of all torques around the pin. The sum of all torques around the pin is zero. We know that, otherwise this whole truss is going to move on us and, and we're unemployed then. So that'll be a problem. Uh, so to look at this, we need to take a look at each force acting on this truss. So there's some force by the roller, which we're gonna guess is up. We'll see if it actually is. There's gonna be some force by the pin, which we'll also guess is up. And again, we'll see what it actually is once we work this all out. Uh, let's stick with the convention. Clockwise is gonna produce positive torques. And so looking around the pin, uh, let's start with the force by the roller. Let's guess this is upward. So our force by the roller at an effective moment arm of 20, that's gonna be positive torque, because that would be, if we're right in our guess up, upward, that's gonna produce a torque clockwise around this point right here. Next, we've got this 100 pound load. And interestingly enough, this load is actually going to attempt to rotate this entire truss clockwise as well, so it's positive. Now, the effective moment arm of this 100 pound load is five feet. Again, if you haven't watched the video on effective moment arms, 
click up here. In the opposite direction, fighting both the roller and this 100 pound load, we're gonna have the 200 pound load. We can see that's gonna produce a counterclockwise torque around the pin. So this is gonna be negative. This is 200 pounds acting at a moment arm of 15. And lastly, of course, we have our force by the pin acting at a radius of zero. And that term is zero. And going through and solving this, uh, remember we guessed on our force by the roller. Uh, we guessed that this was upward. If our guess was correct, we're gonna get a positive result here. And, and we do, uh, the force by the roller works out to be 125 pounds, and that is upward. Okay. Had we guessed incorrectly, uh, what we would have found was we got a negative value here. And again, this makes sense. The 200 pound load is producing a, a predominantly counterclockwise torque compared to the 100 pound load, which is just producing a, a relatively small clockwise torque. So this force by the roller has to be producing clockwise torque in order for the net torque around the pin to equal zero. Again, a little thinking goes a long ways with determining directions on these reaction forces. Let's do the same thing around the roller now. Sum of all torques around the roller needs to equal zero, otherwise we're unemployed. Uh, so here we go, we've got this roller and we're gonna work our way through all these forces. We know the force by the roller is 125 and it's at a radius of zero. It's zero times 125, that term is zero. Uh, moving on to the 100 pound load. The 100 pound load in this case is going to be producing a clockwise torque with an effective moment arm of five feet. So we're gonna have positive five times 100. The 200 pound load is also producing a clockwise torque. You'll notice this 200 pound load is going to cause this entire truss to rotate clockwise. Go back to the right hand rule, your effective radius and your force produce a torque into the board that's clockwise. So we're gonna have at a radius of five, because that's the effective moment arm, a force of 200. Now, yes, you could go through and you could work out the angle between this radius vector and this 223. Um, I find that's, that's probably more work than we need to do though. This seems a little bit simpler. Uh, lastly, we're gonna have our force by the pin. And again, we're guessing on which way this force by the pin is gonna be. Since we have two positive torques here, I'm guessing we're probably gonna have a negative torque here. That would imply that this force has to be upward. So this force by the pin is gonna act at an effective moment arm of 20. And when we do this, we solve for FP. And we'll find that FP, the force by the pin, is equal to 75 pounds. Now, there's something going on in this truss that, that we have to be a little bit careful of. And you'll notice, vertically, the sum of all forces add up to zero. Uh, if we look at this over here, the sum of all forces in the y-axis has to equal zero. Again, otherwise we're unemployed. So our forces up are gonna be the force by the roller plus the force by the pin, and then downward we're gonna have this load. And the math checks out here, we'll have 125 up plus 75 up and 200 down. So vertically, things check out. Horizontally, we have to be a little bit careful though, because we've gotten into the situation here that we saw before with the cantilevered trusses, where we have a load, which is in a direction not supported by a roller. And that means we're gonna have a, an additional load on this pin right here. If you wanna go back and take a look at that video, there's a link up here to take a look at the video on cantilevered trusses and dealing with the situation where you have loads that are parallel to the axis of freedom on a roller. To get back to the math on this, the issue is the sum of all forces in the x-axis. If you look at this as we have it drawn right now, if there's 125 pounds up here and there's 75 pounds upward here, all we have is 100 pounds to the left. Now we want the sum of all forces in the x-axis to equal zero. And there's just this 100 pound load here to the left. So there has to be something else acting to the right. 
The answer to that is our pin has to be acting with a force of 100 pounds to the right. And that is because the force by the pin is the only other thing here that can act horizontally. Our roller is free in the horizontal axis. It, it's free to roll. That's why it's called a roller. So there's got to be some force to the right here. So we've got 100 pounds to the left plus our force by the pin in the x-axis. Those have to add up to zero. So our force by the pin in the x-axis has to equal 100. Once we've got our force by the pin in the x-axis equal to 100 pounds, now the math checks out on the horizontal axis. Now that we've found the forces by the supports on the truss, or our reaction forces, it's important to recognize that to solve for the forces internally within the truss, we would go through and use our method of joints just like we normally would with any other truss. So really dealing with multiple loads, there's nothing too scary about it. It involves just a little bit more work when solving for our reaction forces, but ultimately we deal with these trusses the same way we always would. And that's all for now.